a, a big, big part of this uh, of this film, and it, there was a lot of music. Uh, uh, just thinking about music going into it. There was music, uh, you know, in pre-production. There was music when we were there. We we're filming lots of music, and even after our first filming, our first showing was to the Helmohana, and oh. Uh, after the filming was done, uh, they just played music for like the next two hours. So we're going to continue that. I'm going to play a song for you folks. It's kind of a quite a uh, quite a thing to uh, follow. I'm going to call it George Helm and um, and John Osorio. But uh, I'm going to play one of my favorite songs that uh, that uh, I'm going to call it George would sing. Which is, uh, you know, George had a George had a, a gift of uh, really taking these songs in and really uh, honing it and really looking at the very essence of the songs and and you know talking and looking at what the song is talking about. A lot of it, most of the songs, is about Aloha Aina, uh, loving for the land. And uh, so the song I'm gonna sing is a uh, Kamalani Okioka. Uh, uh, sung by uh, uh, Lena Machado, and uh, yeah, hope you folks enjoy. I'm gonna do it in the rendition that uh, that George did, which is just my favorite rendition. <laughs> You're okay. Hear the guitar.
Malu no Iló. Mahalo, Kaliko. So welcome back, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the incredible film and the beautiful song performed by Kaliko. Um, before we start the panel discussion, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the discussion portion of the event is being recorded and live streamed to HHS Facebook page and YouTube channel. And because this is going to be a rich panel discussion, we may run a little past 6.30. Um, but we will be posting the full recording on our website and YouTube channel tomorrow. So feel free to share that with your Ohana friends and loved ones. Um, for those new to Historic Hawaii Foundation, we are a statewide nonprofit that helps people save historic places, sites that tell the stories of the multi-layered history of Hawaii. We do this through education, advocacy, assistance, and protection of and for historic places. So I now like to introduce and extend a warm welcome to tonight's panelists. Aina Paikai is a Native Hawaiian filmmaker that aims to amplify Pacific and Indigenous voices in media. A former Sundance Native Lab Fellow and OEB TV documentarian, Paikai is the founder of his production company, Kama Aina Creations. He recently wrote and acted in the award-winning short film, Down on the Sidewalk in Waikiki, which was inspired by the life and words of Hawaii poet, Wayne Kamuali'i Westlake. Kaliko Ma'i'i has worked over a decade as a professional camera assistant in the film and television industry on such shows as Lost, Hawaii Five O, and films as Jurassic World and King Kong. Kaliko is a producer, writer, and director. He is a co-producer of the Hawaiian language dubbing project of Moana. Kaliko graduated from high school in the first class of Hawaiian language immersion program and he is currently working on an animated film in Hawaiian language on Kamapua'a, a favorite pig god to the Hawaiian people. Mayana Kanoa Wong has worked as a Hawaiian language, history, and cultural kumu since age 13. He currently serves at the Kamehameha schools as a Hawaiian cultural specialist, helping to implement our Hawaiian worldview for the entire organization. As a filmmaker, this is the second project that he has been directly associated with. He co-produced the film Hai Hawaii by award-winning award director Tai Sanga. The film won the Audience Choice Award for HIF in 2018. Justin Ah Chang is a native Hawaiian filmmaker from Mililani, Oahu. After graduating from USC School of Cinematic Arts in 2011, Justin worked as a cinematographer and editor at OEV Television Network, Hawaii's first indigenous broadcast station. Most recently, his acclaimed film, Down on the Sidewalk in Waikiki, premiered at the 2019 Maori Lands Film Festival in New Zealand and shared the People's Choice Award for Best Short Drama. The film has continued to screen at festivals around the world, including Imagine Native Film Festival in Toronto, the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, and the 307 Film Festival in Wyoming, where it was awarded Best of Fest. He currently is producing Kekama Amona's narrative short, A Malama Kono Wili Boy, and in pre-production for his second directorial narrative short, The Man and the Tree. In addition, Justin continues to create culturally inspired place-based stories on a work for hire basis through his production company, Olona Media. Tonight's um, panel discussion will be moderated by Dami Dawson. She has served as the Hawaii State Film Commissioner since 2001, heading the office that is the first point of contact for all production, large and small, throughout the state. She and her staff provide coordination for all film and photographic use of state-administered parks, beaches, highways, harbors, airports, and other state facilities. Dawson also manages Hawaii's Refundable Production Tax Credit Program and oversees the Hawaii Film Studio at Diamond Head. She works as an advocate for filmmakers and the film industry and promotes Hawaii as a world-class filming destination. She is active in many community organizations, including the Protect Koho Olave Ohana and is a lifelong student of, Hulu, of Hula and Olelo Hawaii. She serves as a member of the Historic Hawaii Foundation Board of Trustees. So I will now turn it over to Donnie and welcome all of our panelists. Oh, mahalo, Michelle. Mahalo, everyone. I think we just need to take a big collective breath here and just 
try to get back to the 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 moments of that film um, when John Osorio's voice comes through in singing Hawaiian Soul. I've seen that film so many times and I just, um, every time I get something new out of it and I'm so thrilled to have the, the, the filmmakers with us uh, tonight. I wanna just give a really quick special shout out to Malia Hulliman, who is who's one of the co-producers and was supposed to be with us this evening and she wasn't feeling well, but um, she is, is missed and, and, and with us in spirit. Hopefully she's watching and um, for everyone uh, who was involved in the making of this film, uh, we know who you are and, and we're just so grateful um, that you've brought this to life. And I wanna, before we kind of get into talking about George's legacy, I wanna take it back to, um, to Ina and, and really maybe you can kick it off by talking about um, how you settled on the name Hawaiian Soul. Um, because I know there were there were other contenders and just maybe you can set the stage for our conversation as to why you chose that title. Sure, mahalo. Mahalo everyone and thank you again for your patience and sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, with the title Hawaiian Soul, which yes, uh, you're correct that it was kind of, um, late coming in the versions of the scripts and what we thought we were gonna identify as to what was the key of the story. And I think when coming around to, of course, Uncle Randy and John's um, song, Hawaiian Soul and the mana that that particular song already has, um, whether you know if it's about George or not, that it has its own weight that it carries with and speciality to each and every person that's listened to it. Um, you can tell that there's a heaviness to it. And I think um, also in what George often speaks about in a lot of um, his uh, the documents that have him recorded his interviews and stuff like that, he speaks to kind of the heart and what he feels like uh, is his purpose in sharing um, this new idea of Aloha Aina, right? And that the soul is really at the heart of what the Hawaiian soul is what we're trying to really elicit in our people again, something that had been lost or taken away, however you look at it. And so um, whether he knew Olelo or not, I mean, um, or those other things that maybe defined what it meant to be Hawaiian, it really to him was um, that essence, that, that heart that um, I think us as Hawaiians really have and um, wanted to bring forth. And so for us in terms of um, honoring him and hopefully educating more folks abroad that this title said a lot about what we were trying to provide with when you watch it. And so there's a Hawaiian element and also we're trying to get deeper to that understanding, um, hopefully through this visual sense of storytelling, what that Hawaiian soul might feel like or, or what it actually means, I guess. So, um, and just, you know, to, uh, as you said, to give recognition to John Osorio and the late Randy Borden for writing that song. And if I understand John's, um, um, when I was speaking with him at one time about that song, that it, he, he wrote, they wrote it very quickly. It was, it, it just kind of came to them as this gift. And my understanding was that it, it was written um, right after they called off the search for, for um, George and Kimo. And um, the song just just came to them, and um, and I think it you know growing up um, it it has been probably the most quintessential song from our generation, and we really mahalo them for giving us that gift of song, which really um, you know permeates um, all of this. I wanted to just go around uh, to everyone, maybe start with Kaliko and then Liana and Justin and ask each of you um, in, in general, kind of how you got um, pulled into this uh, project and, and, and how, you know, how it became, um, how, how you became connected to it, and then maybe take it a step further and talk a little bit about what the legacy of George Helm means to you um, in, in your life, in your families, in your own communities. And maybe you can, we can start with Calico.
<laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so uh, I was always I was always very attracted to to uh, George Holmes' music. I, I've always felt that his sound and his style was was uh, so unique compared to you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of risk taking that he's taking and then and again like he's 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 digging deep into all the different songs and trying to find trying to find the the, the soul of the songs and i'm going to read this quote it's my favorite quote of his when i was uh when i was going through his uh, archival footage he says uh the Hawaiians have different ways of speaking their language, and the best way they do speak their feelings is through the music, because behind the words is the kauna, the hidden feelings and the hidden emotions of the Hawaiian soul. And I just thought that was, I thought that was uh, uh, very uh, mind blowing, and you know. All these songs, all these, all these Hawaiian songs. Some of them you think that might be kind of cheesy. If you actually like break it down, um, there is is, deep, is digging deep into our love as a people for our land, and you know I think that's what he was he, that he was going for. And you know my father, you know my father, he uh, played music with George, but uh, he didn't tell me. You know, he kept it quiet. Uh, I think a lot of those people in that generation, a lot of people who knew him, a lot of people, a lot of his friends, just didn't talk about it because of a, because there was a real danger there um, to just knowing George at the time. And so I didn't know, I didn't know until I was in high school that my dad even knew him. And my brother was like, "Yeah, who do you think he's talking about, Steve?" In the in the album, he says, "Steve on bass, that's your dad." You know, I had no idea. Um, and so from that point, for me, for me personally, uh, you know, I, I'm a student of George's music. He, his style of singing, he's, he's taught me how to sing. He's taught me how to project, how to dig deep, go low and then shoot up high really fast and just really take risk and not, not, not be afraid of making mistakes, um, which is one of the elements in the, in the film itself. Um, so that's, to me, this personally, like, I, 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 I go through waves of like, okay, I'll study his music, I'll go through it, and then I'll, and then I'll take a pause. And, and so he, he's been a big part of my life, uh, a teacher of mine, uh, helping me come out of uh, my shyness, because uh, I was a very shy child. And you know, one of the one of the wonderful things that we learned through making this film, through meeting his friends, is that he was actually uh, he had a shyness to himself too, and uh, music and his culture actually and his love for Hawaiian music brought brought it out of him and turned him into this uh, charismatic, outspoken uh, leader. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. So, and your dad's kind of shy too. No. <laughs> sort of. Um, so, Liana, how about you? How how um, how did you? You know, we we talked about this early on, but how did you um, hooey up with Ina and the others in in doing this this story? We we go way back. Um, but how, what was you, what's your story in getting connected to Hawaiian Soul? Oh. Um... Ele o mahalo ke ia, e ka o e historical society Andrea Michelle Dani no ka aina ia maku e ka aina i ki a mo olelo no na aloha aina apuni o ka ho nua aloha aina ho i ka ko a pau uh, mahalo Dani thank you guys um, for putting on this event I look at the uh, the list of names and so many teachers family ohana people that have been aloha aina inspirations in my life. Um, are on here. So aloha nui to each and every one of you out there um, who are doing the good things in the community for your families and for everyone. Um, you know, it's, it's such a blessing to be a part of this project in a small way. And, and um, you know, I was blessed to fall in love with the island of Kaho'olawe. 
And for any of us who, many of us who've been there, you kind of know that that feeling once you reach the sand and the shores. My first access was a makahiki, and I remember hustling in my my two water jugs on the first boat and putting them on shore and literally kissing the sand, you know, mahalo in Keakua that finally made it to the aina. And, um, you know, I mahalo so many of these heroes who threw down for us. And we had learned about the story of George Helm. I grew up in Kulakayapuni. We had, we had very few Hawaiian heroes, but George is one of those that you kind of had heard about, but you still don't really know until you, you start to dive into it a little bit more. And, and I think our, our, our culture, our people today are looking more for heroes and we look outside more often than not. And we forget that we have some amazing, amazing heroes from our community, from our aina, you know, from even like an island as beautiful as Molokai, you know, rising up to become this powerful voice that would inspire a generation and a movement. And, um, you know, I was blessed to come a part of this project as, as, as friends of Aina, you know, just Kaliko and I went to school together in Kulakayapuni. And we've been talking about how do, we sh how do we build our capacity in media here in Hawaii? How do we take control of the narrative and start telling our own stories? We have the talent, we have the great filmmakers, we have good actors and actresses. We're building it, we're ready. We just gotta take it and grab it and go. And, um, you know, Kaliko approached me saying, hey, you know, me and I have been talking about a story about George and um, we'd love to see if you want to be a part and help us make the steps to Holomua, this project. And um, I kind of jumped on to, to figure out ways to kako'o and um, the producer, I, still learning what that kuleana is, but it's basically, you got to make it happen. And you got to help the team make it happen because Aina and Kaliko and Justin, they got to visualize creating the film and putting it on the screen. But there's all these other little pieces on the back end that you got to kind of weave together to make it pa'a and lash together so that they can sail and they can sail the canoe with the crew. And so I kind of got lucky. I got to make some of the connections with the Proteka Ho'olave Ohana, who we love, who so many of them sacrifice every, every day in their home communities and then when they're on island to share this message. And we had to connect with them. We had to connect with Uncle John. We had to connect with Uncle Walter. And then we had to figure out, you know, how can we fund um, a film like this? And um, we just got to reach out to good Aloha Aina who love this too. And we were able to kind of connect to a few awesome people who supported this project. And um, we know there's many more out there, but those few helped us to really put the wind in the sails and get us going. And um, yeah, so blessed to be a part of this project and as a member of the Protecolave Ohana, but really as a dad, I want my babies to see our heroes on screen and our stories. And it cannot just end in a book. It cannot just end in the story that you hear about in the old newspaper, which are great. But we, if we can bring it to life on the platforms that they're accessing, and to me, that's the excitement of it. And, and it's been an honor to be in this ride with, with everybody on this, on this call, but those that you don't see who, who threw down with aloha and was amazing. So mahalo, Donnie. Wow. Um, that's awesome. So Justin, um, how about your, your role and, and how you got involved and kind of what, what, you, what you brought to it and what you took away from it maybe? Um, yeah, I think for myself, I, the first time I learned about who George Helm was, I was a freshman at Kamehameha, um, and, uh, in our English class, in Richard Amasaki's English class, he made us read Ho'i Ho'i Ho, mm -hmm. and, um, that was my first exposure to, um, Pataka Ho'olave and, and hearing George's story, and I just remembered from that moment, just being so inspired, you know, by all of it as, as a high schooler, kind of figuring out my own Hawaiian identity, learning what, what all of that means. And, um, and yeah, and, and I guess maybe without even consciously knowing it, I think George and, and his level of consciousness, his, his Ike that he shared with all of us and that, that he left for us, um, it's, it's kind of became an anchor, I guess, that, that we can all pivot back to, you know, and, and kind of, a foundation that we can can all build off of, um, especially in uh, in our generation. You know, um, myself, I know, 
Coleco, um, who are kind of working on the shoulders of, of those that came before us. You know, so many on this call, and like Rayana said, in, in all realms, in Pateko Olave, in the Va'a community, um, all throughout our Lahui, doing amazing work to um, just level up in the ways that they can for the next generation to be able to stand on that um, and push things even further. And so, yeah, for me, my, my interest and passion has always been um, filmmaking and bridging the passion for um, Hawaii and its people and its culture um, with that love of film and, and filmmaking. And so, um, you know, I've been really, really good friends with Aina for over a decade now. And, um, you know, we became brothers working together at Weeby TV and, um, you know, share a lot of, a lot of history together. And um, as we started expanding from the work at Weeby TV and, and started um, broadening, you know, our interests in wanting to do more scripted films, more movies, you know, for now it's, it's short films and one day hopefully eventually uh, expand to features or episodic kind of stuff. But, um, you know, the short film that I had directed that I now wrote and acted in down on the sidewalk in Waikiki was really a first opportunity for us to collaborate on that level and, and really work on something that was much bigger than what we were used to working on. And I think that experience sort of um, showed us we could do it. And then when it started playing around the world in film festivals and, and we started to see the reaction that our own communities here in Hawaii, um, the way that they responded to the film, um, you know, it kind of ignited that fuel to keep going. And Aina had already had um, this project in the works and um, had applied for funding from the same source that I, that we had gotten funding from down on the sidewalk for. And, and so after he had gotten that grant, I think it was at that point that, um, you know, he had asked me to kind of join the team and, and help, um, help each other carry. And I think that's the beautiful thing about this particular project and this crew is, um, you know, the, the Pilina that everybody shares and has, and that at least, you know, just looking at this producer crew, I, I think Aina did a really good job in, choosing it correctly, everybody brings different elements of expertise, you know, Kaliko with the music and his talent in music and his history with his dad and Layana and his connections to Mo'o Meheo and to, um, and to Proteko Olave. And then just, you know, for myself, my background in film, I think um, each one of us sort of brought different elements to the project. And so um, I guess collectively as a producer hat, um, it was really awesome to kind of see how all of that wove together to to um, bring this film to life and um, yeah such a an amazing you know for me I think every every film journey is is a spiritual one too and and everybody just like being on on a canoe and on a journey everybody that was there they're the ones that kind of know and you, it's hard to speak to other people about it but but to those people that you share the experience with and and it's because of that transformative spiritual experience that it leaves with you and so yeah, many, many things that I took away from it. Mm. Real, real quick, uh, Donnie, just to, yeah. uh, just to bring in uh, Malia, Malia Holloman as well. Uh, initially, me and Aina wanted to bring Connie Al Alessino, uh, who's, a, who's a producer. We wanted her to come on and just kind of take care of everything. And we could just like, don't have to do much work, you know, like just have her do the bulk of it. But she was a, she's a paid professional, she's busy. And she said, oh, why don't you, what you ever think about bringing uh, Malia on? And I was like, I was like, yeah, Malia, Malia would be great. She's, I, I've met her actually on Koholave. It's the first time I met her. She was in high school. And, uh, and she started working in the film industry. And, you know, I kind of, you know, I, the film industry is, it can be a rough place for Hawaiians because uh, it's just rough. It's just, uh, it's, uh, it's brutal. And so, uh, you know, over the years, I look after her and she would go, she, she, out of, out of all of us, uh, you know, this, this little Wahine, uh, Wahine, she, she's put her body more on the line, you know, uh, in Standing Rock, up on the kill. Um, she's the first one to tell me about Palestine. I never knew, you know, the deals of Palestine. And uh, so. Wow. With with her, she she truly you know aloha aina, and she has the production skills uh, on the producing side and the and the production side. So it was a great 
it was a great fit to have her in and we're sorry that she couldn't she couldn't make it today to hear Thank her on that you. one for for saying that because uh, you know i really want uh, you know her to 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 be amongst us and i think it's important to for everybody to understand that it took many different people and different types of people to um to really make this cohesive um team to to pull this off and and i have to say to aina this is all like super super heavy kuliana and you know, for you, um, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, that, Kuliana. And you know, it's one thing to 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 do a biopic um, and you know focus on somebody who's actually you know lived and walked on this earth, but it's another thing altogether to be doing that um, about the most important figure in our generation and our hero and, and, you know, who had, you know, family and friends who loved him dearly. And so maybe you can share a little bit about that Kuliana. Uh, mahalo. Um, yeah, I think that was the one thing that I was meant to do of all these things. I think everyone else um, actually are more talented and more cohesive to be able to make the film work. But for whatever reason, I think I was called upon to at least talk story with the Ohana and figure out what is the most righteous way to approach this film in order for them to heal, I think, which was our hope and intention, uh, one of many, um, because I don't really know what that hurt. Uh, that lives inside of them actually is. I can't personally feel it, but um, it was enough of a curiosity and uh, I hope respectfulness to at least talk about it, which is something that I heard that they, they had a hard time doing in the first place. Um, even with their own kids, you know, a lot of the siblings, George's siblings that they wouldn't even share too much about their brother because of all of that eha that lives within them. And so um, in that way, I think I was separated enough um, to be a, not a family member, to be curious enough to um, ask the hard questions maybe. Hopefully, um, local Maikai enough to um, gain their trust. And um, someone told me that, yeah, I think my kuleana is just to be the vehicle to to guide the story and hopefully do what we intended to do, which was share this man's message with a, another generation. Um, but at the same time, give give him back to to his generation and um, and us being an El Makua generation to be able to honor him. This is our legacy, our kind of um, mahalo to him uh, because we um, he may never know, but you know what he did for us really made us stronger. That's what he, what he did, and so um, it was scary. It was a matter of flying over, well, it was connecting through the Wa'a and then bringing, slowly being bringing, brought in uh, along to talk story. Even when we did talk story, it wasn't super, you know, of, of course they wouldn't let everything go. They barely do that for their own family. So they wouldn't necessarily talk up front about, to a stranger about, you know, all their feelings and what they wanted. But um, so pers persistence and perseverance, I think, in order to, to get to this point. And actually, I think that's one of my biggest takeaways from George's legacy. And one of the reasons why I thought he was such a good role model when Coleco talked about him being a good film to make uh, many years ago, that it was his perseverance and his uh, work ethic that really attracted me to him as a great role model for our, our uh, next generation, um, or for all of us. And that, you know, he wasn't immediately a talented singer. He loved music, but that didn't mean he was a really great singer off the bat. And he worked hard, really hard to be the level that he was. And same thing, I think, with his, what I found that through our research was that even when he talked out loud publicly, um, he seemed so easy and effortless, but it was actually a lot of um, notes that he would write and practice in front of the mirror and those kinds of things to make sure that he had his thing together that he did his homework is what he would often say to make sure that he was prepared enough to um, get his point across to, especially an opposing um, 
group, you know, and uh, and so those are that's I think what I cherish about him and the lesson that I've learned through this process is that even though it took us nearly ten years to put this film out, that it was worth uh, pursuing, and I think so, especially now that more people I feel like, uh, especially the students, we've done a lot of virtual screenings with students because this was an educational um, legacy piece, kind of first and foremost. And then also, uh, like I said, and with these kinds of arenas to be able to share far and wide, again, this man's message and, and his heart. Yeah, you know, I mean, pe people should know that um, the, the family was not necessarily in 100% agreement about having George's story told. And I think it's a testament to, um, as, as Zach said, in the making of piece, um, you know, the, the, the feeling that they had with you, about you, for you, in, in trusting you. And, you know, Kikama said the same thing about, you know, knowing you through the, the, the Ohana Va'a, but just, um, it, I think it's not, I think it, it was the first time that the family kind of came together and um, agreed upon this telling of this story. And I think that that is um, evident in the final product is, is, is the fact that you had this, uh, this um, unilateral support from everyone. And, and that's something to really um, be proud of. I, you know, I know we've talked about standing on the shoulders of those that came before us. And we all know that if, if it had not been for George, um, none of us would have experienced Koho Olave um, to this day. And, and so we, the, the debt of gratitude that we have to him for his life and his laying down of his life uh, for the rest of us and for our people to, to, to reconnect with that Island and for, for, you know, the greater, um, public to, to be aware of this story as it fits into the larger context is so important. Um, and I wanted, since we've all been on Island and we love it so dearly, I thought maybe we could, um, talk a little bit about, um, you know, Lana, you mentioned kissing the sand when you first got there. Um, but maybe we can all just kind of take a little time to share our experiences of, of maybe your first time to Koho Olavi or, or a particularly powerful um, moment over there, because we all know it's a deeply um, spiritual place. And um, that's largely because Koho Olave has not gone the way of, of the other islands. And so it's it's mana to a great degree is still intact um, and it and it ends up giving back to all of us. So um, I don't know who wants to jump in. Um, anybody who wants to just kind of talk about your Koho Olave, um, maybe your best Koho Olave story. I'm going to start real quick because I feel like I have the least profound um, Koho Olave moment, but was uh, able to go once and um, I think it's a part of our agenda to go again to kind of close out this project and mahalo kanaloa for um, this reawakening that we've all had. And um, I think for me that kind of ties to the film is that the, the shot with the feet, we, we use the feet as a motif to illustrate um, the boy and the man and um, also his conversation with the Aino. And, um, but that came from Koho Olave, uh, one of the kua that was there asked us as we were about to hike up to the peak to take off our shoes and feel the aina and feel the hurt that it had gone through. And so that always resonated with me. And after that, I would uh, often hike barefoot to uh, introduce myself, I guess, to each aina that I would go and visit. And so um, one little lesson that I, I think stuck out to me and also I feel like uh, some of the kids have also mentioned as well it's like um, just in a simple image that I'll oh, take off your shoes and get connected go barefoot and what that means you know in terms of uh, connection and and yeah getting to recognize the different feels of our Aina and, and yeah and so that's my one little thing. Was it during Makahiki or was it just um it was not during Makahiki that you no, were there. I was, uh, I was just transferring from Leeward Community College to 
UH, and so it was a Koku Apuni uh, kind of program that kind of ushered us through the summer to go to UH and a lot of unlearning, uh, relearning or whatever it had been in terms of my Hawaiian identity and was very thankful for that access to the Koholawe. I met Liana uh, and uh, Maile, who's Kaliko's um, wife and a lot of other friends and actually family members, I would say, because of that trip. And so, um, yeah, a lot of uh, mahalo. I think you were there too. I think you were there mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> So who, who wants to jump in with their, either related to the film or not, your your Koho'olawe memory of, I don't know, first time? Well, go, <clears throat> gr growing up, I, I've always had an interest in, in Hawaiian religion. And and uh, I, remember, I remember growing up, nobody's talking about it. Nobody says anything. I saw, I saw one guy once at a, at a panel thing, he was talking about it. I go ask him some questions. Uh, an hour later, I got like, I got the, all these aunties telling me, hey, never mind that, you know, like, it's like, well, I can't even talk about it. Like, we can't even discuss this. We can't even, there's, there's zero talking about it, you know, like, mm -hmm. and that's happened a few times, like uh, in Hula, like, oh, look, can, can we talk about like the, uh, the spiritual side, the, the Hawaiian religion side? It's like, no. We can't talk about it. <laughs> mm. And for me personally, uh, you know, Kaholave was was the one. I mean, it's hard for me to, to know exactly what I feel at any given moment of wherever I am. Uh, but the one thing I would say is like, is a uh, you know, Kaholave was the one place where we could talk about it, and I didn't have to defend myself, and we could actually have a discussion uh, about about. Um, you know, the, the, the topic of Hawaiian religion is like the is like the one of the most kapu things. And that was, just, that was what was so awesome about the, the Mauna Kea movement is it was like Hawaiian religion was like right in the forefront of all of it, all of that. Um, but that, and then also the, the two times uh, I was able to bring my keiki uh, to Ko'olawe was, was a very special memorable moments. How old were they? Uh, the first time Hapuna, Hapuna was one. Um, Hakiwawa, and then uh, we went. To, next time we went to Holokanai. Uh, 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 we took our. We Hapuna was about three, and Vanaa was about one. And coming off that ramp was the most scariest thing ever. Like I was like bouncing on the beach. And I got my child in my arm, like, I was like, can I just throw her in, <laughs> throw her in the ocean and then swim her in? Like, cause it's, <laughs> cause, uh, it's like no, that's the, the old... other side of the island. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. Cause it's one of those old school, uh, World War II, uh, Saving Private Ryan, uh, uh, Landing boats. Craft. And it's like, it's like cracking against the, the sand. And that was the most scariest thing ever <laughs> as a father. Yeah. On this beautiful white sandy beach that was yeah. you know, formerly occupied by the, the the military, and and Liana, you have you have a son whose name is Kealoha Aina, so it doesn't get any more real than that. But um, and you've and I I've been on island with you when your kids have been just covered in dirt and just playing in the dirt and super super happy. And what can you say to add to what you've already shared about? what Koho Olave experience means to you. It's just such a, such a special place. And you know, like when your battery is running low and you, you plug them in and it gives it that, that juice that it needs. And you can, you know, you play, you can watch your video, you can do your call, your email. There's something about going to the island that recharges you as a Kanaka. Mm -hmm. And we almost kind of like Jones for it after like, oh, we got to get back to island. But there's something so special about being on island, being on the soil, being in those sands, you know, being amongst whoever is there. Is, is something really magic about those times. And, you know, I just can't help but be overwhelmed by all of the, the warriors who fought for our access to island. To think that for years, that island was being desecrated by these heavy, heavy, like, scary bombs and we got to learn all about those bombs to become access guide kakoo 
you know, I think about like, you know, those early warriors, George and Kimo, Uncle Emmett, Uncle Walter, them. I see Manny on here, and Auntie Davy. You know, so many people, so many people who who fought tooth and nail to make sure that we we could have access so that me and Kaliko could bring our babies one day. You know, yeah. I, I I always think about that heaviness when we go, but the gratitude of how much the Aina responds when we're there. And like you become attuned to all of these beautiful Ho'ailona that sometimes we, we take for granted here on Oahu or the other islands we may be on. But when you're on Koho'olawe, it's just you and the Aina. And you, we're usually doing ceremony and your Ho'ailona senses are heightened and you're just focusing on uplifting the mana of the ho'okupu that we're giving so that they can serve the entire pai aina of Hawaii. And you, you, you channel that through the aina, through the soil, through your feet, and up into what we're presenting and when we're giving our, kup, our kupu to, ho, to ho'olu, our, our pai aina for makahiki, or for our ipu akane, or for our many ceremonies, that that island has been a training ground for many of us. Mm -hmm. A lot of our cultural practices our pules, our ealaes, our ehomais were honed and strengthened on Kaho'olave. A lot of the makahiki that is reviving now in beautiful ways was because of, a lot of it was because of the revival happening on Kaho'olave. A lot of the aloha aina movements that we see today is because a few Hawaiians are brave enough to stand up against the most powerful military in the world and say that this is heaven. And you guys are bombing our kupuna. Mm. And, and so I, I hope that every Hawaiian or anybody who loves Hawaii gets a chance to visit Kaho'olawe and give back to plant, to clear, to prep, to, to build hale, to sell va'as, to train and look at the stars and observe the oceans from Kohemala Malama o Kanaloa Kaho'olawe. Mm. Mahalo, mahalo. Whew. Justin, you want to add something to that? Um, sure, I can share a little bit. Um, I've only ever been on island twice. Um, the first time I ever had the opportunity to go was um, with Hokulea. Um, I think it was 2013 when they were doing their statewide sale right before the worldwide voyage. Um, and we went into Honokanaia and spent a couple of days there. And um, <clears throat> I think working out a wee view, like I've been super fortunate to have gone to so many places that I wouldn't have otherwise um, because of the nature of the work that we do. Um, it's really for me, like my, my work is kind of my doorway and my access into so many spaces that are so special that, you know, not too many people do get to experience, um, but, but is so transformative at the same time. And so that was my first experience, but because it was sort of for work and, and the focus was on the filming, um, I feel like that connection part wasn't as strong that time around. <clears throat> the second time that I had a chance to go was actually a couple of weeks before we started filming Hawaiian So um, the Pico crew was uh, doing an axis. It was about 15 of us, all Kane, that... Um, had basically, I guess they, the plan was to go and land at a bay called Ahupu, which um, there was no base set up um, before we had gotten there. And I guess our whole mission for the three or four days was to um, build a new base camp there, kind of clear the area and then work on the Alaloa, start building an Alaloa that would eventually connect to the one that, um, you know, those guys have been working on for, for years now. And so... Um, you know, originally it was supposed to be myself and Aina and <clears throat> the lead actor, Kolea, to go on this trip. And, um, you know, other things came up. And I think rightfully so, you know, they, it was, a, like I said, a couple of weeks before we started filming. And so, you know, Aina and, and Kolea was very much in the heat of like juggling everything that needed to to come into place and fall into place for the film to actually happen. Um, and so it was just myself that kind of had that opportunity to go along with um, two other, two other brothers that became crew members on, on the, the, on the movie. Um, 
Kavaioli Ho and, and Moku Young um, were also there. And I think for me, it was that it was that trip that was the super transformative one. Like I didn't have to go with a camera. I didn't, you know, go with the focus of needing to shoot a piece to turn to edit. It just I was able to go just with the the intention to carry this project um, to the island, um, the intention to kind of set the pule and set the intentions there um, that it might guide us through through um, bringing this project to to fruition. And so um, it was just super magical. We, we set up camp and basically slept right there on the beach uh, in, in the Bay of Ahupu. Like I was probably the most underprepared one. I think all I had was like a sleeping bag and maybe like a small tarp, but um, literally slept right there on the beach underneath the stars um, every night and looking out you looked right across the channel to to Molokai and that was our view every single day when we woke up in the morning when we came back from Hana in the afternoon um, when we would hang out and I think the coolest part was like you don't always know why you're asked to do things or, or why things are set in in, um, in motion a certain way until until later on um, when that momi comes to and so it was you know after that trip when we were filming Hawaiian Soul um, the church that we filmed at Our Lady, Our Lady of Seven Sorrows um, <clears throat> I didn't even realize it but it was actually Kovai and Moku that realized it one, one day kind of just standing at the um, in the entrance to the the church um, grounds and kind of looking out at the bay looking out at the water and the view from the church is the exact opposite view of Ahupu. And so, you know, we were literally looking right across the bay to where we were going to film when we were on Ko'olave and when we were on Moloka'i filming, um, you know, that that area on, on Kanaloa was kind of what was right in alignment with us and, and kind of anchoring and, and channeling that. And um, yeah, I think it was just all, all of these kind of connections coming through that um, sort of solidified that we were doing the right thing and on the right path and, and that um, everything was going to be Pono with, with bringing this project to life. Wow, that's really super powerful. Um, before we go any further, I want to check in with Michelle on timing. Is it okay that we're running over and how, how much time do we need before, or can we have before we need to wrap it up? I think it's fine to go over. Um, we'll have the full recording available, so I'll make sure to send that to everyone who registered and attended so people can watch it if they had to log off a little early. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm just, I'll just add my two cents for, you know, I have many, many Koholave stories, um, but I think the most um, rich for me was when I was asked to go um, with the Helm family. And it was the first time, I think this was 2007, and it was the first time Uncle Larry was still alive. And um, it was the first time since George um, had passed that, and had disappeared that the family um, had the opportunity to go. Um, it wasn't everyone, but it was a, a, a huge number of the family. And I, it was an Easter weekend. And I remember, um, being down at um, the plaques that are down at Hakiwava on the pathway to Hakiwava Iki. And on Easter morning, everybody just went, the family just went and gathered around and they all just kind of very organically gave their whole kupu to um, in the memory of George and Kimo and just to the island and to the, the that moment where we were. And, I just felt so um, extraordinarily honored that I was able to be there for that and um, just kind of be a, a silent witness to it um, as it was happening. And, and that was really beautiful. But, you know, the island is, um, I'm so happy to hear that story that you told, Justin, because I, I think that all of your experiences with Koho Olave definitely uh, fed into and strengthened this story and I think really led to what everyone witnessed um, today in, in, in watching it. 
So why, and going back to, to Aina, why is this story important, Ke'ia Manava? Why is it important? Um, I think it, in terms of timing, uh, the serendipity of things, in terms of when we had talked about it, uh, me and Coleco in 2012, and maybe made a push in like 2017, and then that kind of like um, falling aside until it made it became real. And so I think the timing of all of that, uh, especially in 2019, when um, you know most of us had been born after this movement, and so never really had a personal connection to what I think they actually felt in terms of protecting Aina, and mm -hmm. then we were given this opportunity to actually feel that same um, within our own kind of connection to Aina, but also as a collective, how all of us felt um, strongly about what was happening on Mauna Kea and um, given a chance to understand that a little bit stronger. Um, it was all research-based, it was all textbook, uh, maybe some stories, and uh, but not, not really knowing how to embody Aloha Aina necessarily. Um, or at least speaking for myself. And, um, but being able to feel the energy that we all carried in that time, summer, summer of 2019 was, um, yeah, I think really what came to mind was that this is, we're learning right now how to, how to actually accomplish um, what they accomplished. And also bringing back what, what they did accomplish was teaching you know, the kiai and, and uh, informing the movement of um, asking our kupuno and so I think in a lot of ways, those lessons were learned. And then also coming from um, now what we know through 2020 and the pandemic um, and all of the racially charged um, colonized mindsets that we've been um, talking about for so long, I think especially Hawaiians have and all of our um, oppressed indigenous people, but at the same time, um, not really getting the full recognition, I think from on, on a wider scale. And so, this is another uh, inspiration, I think, this man is um, one of many that exists, uh, leaders that had stood up and sacrificed for what they believed was right, which was land and native rights. And so in that way, I think that's why um, just another cannon to the arsenal, I hope for people, especially our younger people, like I keep mentioning that um, these are these are the people, and then there's a lot more people being listed in the chat too. And there's so many others that um, that we can learn from, and I think why George gets um, put to the fore is because of in the way in the suddenness that we lost him. And so this, what I've always loved about film is that the power of its existence, and that we get to go back and watch George um, before he passed and sing songs and um, all of these um, inspiring leaders through, through film and all the ones that exist today, we're gonna be able to, our grandchildren are gonna be able to come back and witness, watch this panel if they want to. And so like the, the link that um, film creates and um, the continuing of education and um, inspiration, I think is why it's important today. Anybody wanna jump in with more mana'o, that's well said. Real quick, uh, Dani, um, one of the, was hoping the one ha'avina might be that, you know, George finds his voice and uses his voice as a platform to share the importance of Aloha Aina, what was going on on Koho Olave. You know, and, and I think the hope too is that Everybody finds their voice and whatever that may be, whether that's teaching, whether that's being an awesome mom or dad or grandma or grandpa, whether that's being, you know, somebody making film, telling stories. We all have to find our own voice and our platform, our platforms that we can build upon, stand upon. And that this story is, is a really, in just a succinct way, you can see how George kind of finds his voice in his journey and uses it to, that was a real story that Uncle, Uncle Walter shared with us about when they went to the church. 
Mm. And how it was it was hard. The Kupunas didn't want to hear them because they were talking from here and not from here. Mm. And then George came in and, and he literally strummed and sang songs of the place. And it it connected everybody and it made everybody feel good. It softened them. It softened them, right? It was it was the, the right touch. And then he was able to win over all these kupuna who realized, man, this, the way the media has been portraying you guys is, is ridiculous. But that's all they were getting. They were only getting the newspaper. That's all they were seeing. All oh, Hawaiians, mm -hmm. radicals, just look, and all the pictures, they look like, you know, hippies, dirty. So that was a real perspective. And he found his voice and used his voice to uplift and to share the message. And I hope that, that that's one of the takeaways for everybody who sees it, that we all have a voice. We all have a platform that we can build and set. And okay, kahua mamu, mahope ke kukulu. Let's set our platform strong so that we can build. And um, we hope that Georgia's story inspires more of our people to find that voice and to help be aloha aina, you know, leaders for our lands. And we need, we need it. We gotta step up. And so, Georgia's story is critical in that. So mahalo. Yeah, it really is. I um. As we kind of wind down and 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 wrap this up, I wanna um, I wanna do a couple shout outs here. One is to the Historical Hawaii Foundation because I think that it is in making people aware of these endangered places um, that and 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 not just aware amongst ourselves and our own uh, community, but aware on a global level, um, what, what um, these vahipana that we need to be concerned about. And um, so I wanna encourage everybody to, um, to, to find out more about Historic Hawaii Foundation and the programs that we offer and the, the good work that we do in preserving these things that, are, that are, are unique, unlike any other in the world and that we need to save. And, um, and become a member of Historic Hawaii. I would really encourage people to do that. The other thing is, is that, um, you know, Koholawe is, is in trouble. You know, Koholawe, it is not just, you know, the, the story goes on, the story goes on. And, um, you know, Koholawe is, is struggling uh, uh, for, for funding to, to keep um, the good work of the volunteer programs that are, are happening over there and to keep um, the, the um, protect Koholawe, which is the kahu aina of, of that place to keep those, um, those accesses going and to keep that good work um, uh, happening so that uh, Koholawe can continue to heal. And so I would encourage people to um, visit the Protect Koholawe uh, Ohana website, visit the Koholawe Island Reserve website and find out what, what the, the facts are and find out what we're trying to do in order to keep, um, keep Koholawe alive and protected and flourishing because um, it is critically important that we have this island to, to offer up our future generations. Um, really, really important. So I, I didn't want the, um, the time to go without saying that. The other thing is, is that there was a film that was, um, that was just released um, by Vox Media that we're gonna throw up a, um, a link for it um, that is really powerful because it, it it sets the framework of Koho'olawe. Historically, it talks about the fact that Koho'olawe, um, the bombing stopped on Koho'olawe largely because um, they sued in order to stop the bombing, but they sued based on the National Historic Preservation Act. They sued um, based on the Freedom of Religion Act. They sued on the um, um, uh, Environmental Protection Act that were being violated in 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 all of this. So um, it is it is um, in this framework um, that we were able to um, set the stage for what's going to happen to Koho Olavi in the future. So I wanted you, people to be able to have access to that. I know that historical what is going to this panel discussion is going to be uh, thrown up on their website. Um, and and you will have links uh, to all of these 
places and to this film so that if you want to learn more, do more, you can go there and, um, and, and do just that. So I think maybe the last um, question to just throw out there is what's next for Hawaiian Soul? And when are we going to see the full length feature film? No pressure, no pressure, Aina. Oh, Kaliko is directing that one, that's for sure. <laughs> um, what's next for Hawaiian Soul is, um, you know, due to all of these technical difficulties, I'm actually hoping and ready to um, push on our community screenings. That was a dream of ours prior to COVID. And so I feel like the mana um, that was kind of reciprocated through um, chats and messages and all of that is nothing compared to the way we watch films together in a community environment. I know that um, it's something that we all wanna do, but also we really wanna be uh, cautious and safe and not continue anything um, in the other direction, but it does feel like the time is um, upon us to kind of at least um, start to hopefully gather in small ways and share um, this community bond experience to be able to share these stories, to hear from our audience, to their time, um, if they were a part of the movement and all the names and all the stories and everyone has a George story. And so I've been kind of craving to hear all of that and um, wanting to also give access to a lot of the communities that don't normally get to see films, uh, don't have a theater necessarily um, on your, Kauai's and Molokai's or Eastside Maui's and all of that to be able to um, yeah give it back to them because this is who the film is for and so we've been actively planning um, and Hawaii Island actually is up first in June and so continually trying to figure out the rest of our schedule but um, you can check us out on our website at hawaiinsoulmovie.com to kind of keep updated with screenings but we hopefully to bring the film um, to you. Mahalo, mahalo. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah George, 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 uh, George has a wonderful coming of age story that would work perfect for a feature film. Uh, again, like one of the things that one of the things that we learned is that when he was a young man, when he was in high school, he uh, he would always be laughing, he'd always be joking, he'd always be making people, he'd always be doing funny things, um, which is complete opposite of like when my dad knew him, my dad played music with him in the last year uh, uh, that he was alive. And when he knew George, there was no smiles. There was nothing. There was, there was, he, he, George was very focused. Uh, I mean, according to my dad. And, and you know, I, I, I trip out on the, the lyrics of Hawaiian Soul, even just like, a, like it was almost as if, uh, as me and, so, and and Ina and Justin were trying to trying to figure out the story. What's what's the story? Uh, one of the lyrics is uh, uh, they say, "Before you left to, to seek your destiny, the older voices called and drowned your laughter." And uh, it's it's one of those things where he it was amazing. It to me, it's like mind blowing that uh, John Osorio put that lyrics in there. Um, and, you know, I believe you knew what you had to be, you know, mm -hmm. so it's George uh, becoming this, this person, becoming this entity, becoming this leader who he may, you know, it's something that he, according to his friends, is, is something that he struggled with. He struggled with speaking in front of people. He struggled in, uh, you know, when, when he first came to Oahu from Oluka'i, uh, he could, he, he had a heavy pigeon, um, and he really had to, just like the music, he really had to push and re, re, uh, refine himself, uh, to me for a whole lot of it. Um, and you know, there, there's just a wonderful coming of age story in there. Cause I think that's something, especially like a lot of, a lot of Hawaiian men, they go through, you know, like having to having to uh, come out of the, grow and be, come out of their shyness and, and, and to take on the kuleanas that they have to take on. So, that, that was, awesome. you know, and, you know, I don't know, you know, we, we, 
because of the family, we we stayed. We didn't want to talk too much about his passing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't know. Doing a feature length film, it would have to be. You know, even to make this short film, the, there was a lot of there was a lot of circles. There was a lot of people we had to talk to. We, big mahalo to Pikio Ohana for supporting us. It, we we wanted to satisfy. You know, the main thing was satisfying the Ohana, uh, satisfying uh, PKL, satisfying the people who fund us, who give us money, um, and our Lahui. And, and uh, we would have to go through that same process again for the feature film. And it would have to be something that the Ohana would want. And, you know, we weren't thinking, we're, we're only thinking of making the short film, right, Aina? Like, we're just concentrated on making this short film, getting it right. Cause uh, we wanted to uh, show our faces around Molokai, you know, uh, but um, uh, yeah, it, we'd have to do, we, we'd have to do the same thing for, for the longer, bigger piece, but the structure is there mm-hmm. for a wonderful film. And, and and it's really laid, you know, Hawaiian Soul has really laid the foundation for that to happen. I just, you know, I'm always a big believer that um, uh, in order for it to move forward, in order for it to succeed, it has to, it has to be pono and it has to come together in the way that this film came together over all those years from the idea and the germ of an idea to you know, the, the, the first time you showed it in front of, you know, the Ohana and, and um, really powerful. So um, we're going to be cheering you guys along as you, as you, you know, get to the next chapter. And um, I just am really grateful. I, you know, I feel like our time is, is, is winding down here and, and we need to, um, you know, people need to get to their families and, and um, dinner and all of that. But I just really want to thank each and every one of you for um, the fortitude that you put into creating this and bringing it to life and, um, and just for taking the time to share your stories with everybody today. It's really rich, powerful um, storytelling at its very best. And, and I just am so grateful to each and every one of you. And I know that, that, um, I I would encourage for those of you who don't know the lyrics to Hawaiian soul, I would encourage you to go out and, and, and look it up online and, and just listen to that song. And you're right, Coleco, it is so powerful. And I think that it was absolutely meant to be that Hawaiian Soul was, um, that song was going to be um, the title of this film. And I think that uh, you've given, it's given the film strength and the film has given the song strength to continue to live on. So that's beautiful. And you can also, you can also look up George's um, music and, and it's, it's, it's all over the, the, the internet. So um, anyway, I wanna thank everyone. Thank you to Andrea and Michelle for your uh, incredibly hard, diligent efforts to pull this all together. And um, I think it all worked out even with the technical glitches. Um, and we've got all the various links in the chat and I, unless anybody has any, I, I don't know, Michelle, do you want to close us out? Or um, maybe, Liana, you could, you could do something to just kind of close this out, um, just to kind of wrap it up in a, in a nice um, package for us. I can, I can share a pule after Michelle gives any final announcements, and then I can do a pule to send everyone off. Safety. That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, wow, um, mahalo. I'm like, I'm truly, truly grateful for all of your words and passion. It's, it was such a beautiful discussion and I'm excited to see what's next for Hawaiian Soul. Um, but I do want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. We do hope that you enjoyed the film and the panel discussion. I would like to thank my colleague Andrea Nandoskar for providing technical support and a big mahalo to our incredible panel and to Donny. It's been such a pleasure to hear from the creators and the hearts behind Hawaiian Soul. I think you've left all of us feeling very inspired. 
Um, as Donnie mentioned, I encourage everyone to sign up for the HHFE newsletter at historichawaii.org to receive um, upcoming event details and other opportunities to learn and engage with historic places that make up our beautiful Hawaii. And I will be sending a follow-up email tomorrow to all attendees and to all people who registered for the event. So I'll include all the links that were provided in the chat and different ways you can help support Hawaiian soul and the protect Ho'olawe Ohana. So I do hope all of you have a wonderful evening and I wish the best for you and your loved ones. And um, mahalo nui loa and I will hand it over to Liana. Mahalo, mahalo. mahalo. Well, historical for Ohana for having us and for creating this platform to share the story. E pule kaku, e ke akua na kupuna na ao kua. Mahalo e o ko na na po mai ka i a pau. Mahalo no ka ho a kua kua na mai i ki a mau Ohana aloha aina. Iki ke ho ola i ka mo olelo ku kaku mee o George. A me na poe aloha aina o ka ho olave a o ka ho nua ke kahi. Na okono e kia i a palekana i na ohana a pau ma anei ana me e hiki ole mai ke kahi. A ho una i ko lima aloha e malama e paipai a kakou e holomua ma na hana a pau e ho ola ai ko kakou la hui Hawaii a e malama i ko kakou aina me ke aloha pau ole. Na okono e kia i maua mau i a mako a pau me ke la a mama ua noa. Amen. Mahalo. Thank you guys. Mahalo, everyone, and we will see you again very soon. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo.